after we are waiting for some more uh, participants maybe 2 minutes more okay can start in 2 minutes yeah we will uh, begin in 2 minutes uh till then i will ask all of you to please keep your mics muted thank you Siutsika. Uh, till then uh, while we are waiting i'll uh, i would like to ask the participants uh, please type in the chat box where are you guys located in are you uh, did you join from india did you join from guru guru Go ahead, please. Let's start. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, one step at a time. One day at a time. One hour at a time. Be stronger than your strongest excuse. With a new day comes new strength and new thoughts, isn't it? A very good morning to all those present in India, and a very good afternoon to everybody who joined from the Philippines. I welcome all the participants, the eminent speakers, and our guests on behalf of Marsh Batch Block Three Medical Interns from Junelta School of Medicine to this webinar in collaboration with PMCH, which stands from, uh, which stands for Preventive Medicine and Community Health. Our topic of interest for today will be well. I guess you already saw it on the poster. So yeah, the topic of interest is energy drinks, revving you up or bringing you down. Let's find the answer after watching the presentation. Cool. Uh oh, did I forget something? We'll be playing games which include exciting prizes, but at the end of the presentation. So stay tuned until the end of the presentation. uh to maintain the flow of the presentation i would like uh, to ask all of you to please keep your mics muted during the presentation we will have a interactive session after the presentation where our panel members will be answering your queries or doubts uh until that is over please i would like to ask you again please keep your mics muted so the presentation is not disturbed uh now i would like to call upon the head of department who gave us this opportunity uh dr andres to enlighten her enlighten us with her words of wisdom please talk good, good afternoon so welcome to our public health lecture and the topic for today would be energy drink okay, it's quite common and we look at it as something trivial and not harmful we need that extra jolt of energy whether it be physical uh to go to a basketball game we drink energy drinks we want to put up an all nighter to study we also drink energy drinks but we have to take into consideration if there are benefits there are there hidden or um side effects or disadvantages that we do not know of so this public health lecture aims to do just that so let us listen for this presentation this afternoon welcome But to the presentation of our well, welcome to the presentation of our clips for PMCH this afternoon okay let us start our learning 
journey now. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Doc. Uh, welcome to you too. Now, without any further delay, let's get into what our presenters have prepared for you. So tighten your seatbelts and get ready for the roller coaster of energy drinks. <laughs> Let us start, please. Energy drinks are widely advertised products, uh, so of course everyone must be familiar with it, right? Nowadays, marketing is everywhere, starting from shops, malls, till social media we use in our phones. So, uh, before looking into the history and contents of these drinks, let me share an interview of a doctor on energy drinks. Today we spoke about energy drinks, what every pediatrician needs to know because we are aware that energy drinks are being marketed to youth and our patients and parent population are unaware as well as our pediatricians about what is going on in this market. The first thing that they should know is that sports drinks and energy drinks are not the same. Sports drinks tend to be for rehydration purposes, include a lot of carbohydrates and other water, but energy drinks are meant for, as a pick-me-up and have caffeine and some other hidden ingredients that act as stimulants and can be harmful to our patients. Unfortunately, the labels are vague because energy drinks are marketed as dietary supplements instead of beverages or drugs that are regulated by the FDA. So these unregulated products are out there in the community. They list caffeine sometimes, and if they do, we encourage you to limit your adolescent's use of caffeine to 100 milligrams a day maximum. A typical soda might have 35 to 50 milligrams, maybe as high as 71. In addition, we want you to focus on serving sizes. So for example, drinks that come in very large cans such as Monster Energy or Rockstar are often 24 to 36 ounces, and that may be as many as five servings. And if patients or our youth don't know about this, then they may be underestimating exactly how much caffeine they're getting and drinking the whole can in one shot. In addition, there are energy shots, energy gums, and other products that look like candy or crystal light that we need to be aware of can be problematic. So uh, you guys must have thought that all energy drinks are popular non-alcoholic caffeinated beverages and that they claim to increase energy, enhance mental alertness and physical performance, right? But did you know that there are two kinds of energy products? Well, one is sold in containers similar to those in size of an ordinary soft drinks, such as in a 16 ounce bottle. The other kind is called energy shots, which is sold in small containers uh, holding from two to two and a 
half hours of concentrated liquid. The first energy drink appeared in the US. In 1949, a Chicago-based Tri-City beverage releases a drink called Dr. Enough, which is marketed as the original energy booster. Energy drinks were more popular in Japan from the 1960s. The era of energy drinks started during the 1962 with lipo, uh, lipo D by a company named Taisho in Japan. Lipovitamin D had extra caffeine and vitamins and was marketed as medicinal tonics. The addition of taurin and niacin in the drink was to enhance and improve the energy and concentration. In America, at 1985, Jolt Cola was invented. And later, in 1987, Red Bull Energy Drink was founded. The introduction of Red Bull was accomplished by Dietrich Meschitz in collaboration with Kelia Yovida, a Thai manufacturer and founder of a beverage named Kratin Day. Both creating thing and Red Bull consist of caffeine and taurin. However, Red Bull is the carbonated version variant of the former. Monster Energy Drink created by Hansen Natural in 2002 and creation of a fire energy in 2004. Later, after the overwhelming success of Red Bull, another energy drink called Four Loco, an alcohol-based energy drink, was introduced by the Fusion Pharmaceuticals by 2005. Energy drinks themselves remain incredibly popular. In 2022, the per capita volume consumption of an energy drink in the United States was the highest worldwide, at an average of 28.4 liters per person. This was followed by the United Kingdom, Japan and Spain with approximately 12, 10.5 and 8.8 .8 liters respectively. In Russia, the average per capita consumption of energy drinks lay at around one quarter of a liter in comparison. According to the IRA data, the top five non-aseptic drink brands in 2022 are Red Bull, Monster Energy, VPX, Rockstar, and Ring One. And of course, we are all familiar with Red Bull, right? Well, they hold the title of the most popular energy drink brand. It is interesting to note that the two key ingredients in energy drinks that will change the way people feel are sugar and caffeine. Some of the other ingredients may also have an effect, but these are the two main ingredients behind the craving for energy drinks. They will release feel-good chemicals in the brains. Caffeine is a stimulant which increases activity in the brain and nervous system, whereas sugar raises immediate energy for the body. The other main ingredients of energy or power drinks are taurine, guarana, gluconolactone, ginseng, ginkgo biloba, icarnitine, sodium, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6 and vitamin B12. Taurine helps regulate energy levels, heartbeat and muscle contractions. Guarana increases alertness whereas B vitamins help the body to convert food to energy. We have seen that the main content of energy drinks are sugar and caffeine, but do you guys have an idea on how much sugars these uh, energy drinks actually contain? Well, it amounts up to 27 teaspoons in a single can, which is quite a lot. So now about the caffeine, energy drinks can... Well, that's quite a lot, quite a lot of sugar to be in one place. And guess what? I bet you didn't know it. Okay, so let's see what more do we have in our presentation of did you know or did you not? Contain approximately the same amount of caffeine as a cup of home brewed filter coffee. The average caffeine content of one serving unit of a regular 250 ml energy drink is typically 80 milligrams. But Caffeine is dehydrating and may not be a good choice in hot weather and especially for anyone who is physically active. So, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that adolescents should not consume more than 100 milligrams of caffeine per day. Next to multivitamins, energy drinks are the most popular dietary supplements consumed by American teens and young adults. Men between the ages of 18 and 34 consume the most energy drinks and almost one third of teens between the 12 and 17 years drink them regularly. And uh, we also came to know that men tend to consume these more than when compared with women. 
Why do you guys think this is the case? Well, certainly the media plays an important role in advertising and enticing us by promoting various content that attract the consumers. The key benefits of these energy drinks are their ability to increase alertness and combat fatigue due to their caffeine and also the stimulant content benefits by improving physical performance and cognitive function. This energy drinks also contains antioxidants that helps boost your immune system. Energy drinks and sport drinks. We all know that both are beverages and they are marketed as providing a boost of energy or hydration. But both are intended for different purposes. We all know that what energy drinks are as they contain the caffeine, they increase the energy and alertness. But on another hand, uh, have you ever heard about the sport drinks or uh, do you know that energy drinks and sport drinks are same or different? So okay, let's see what are sport drinks. They are known as electrolyte drinks and are functional beverages whose uh, stated purpose is to only help the athletes to replace the water, electrolytes and energy at the time of any training or competition. So uh, let's see the comparison between both energy drink and sport drinks. Energy drinks are very high in sugar. Uh, they contain the lot of caffeine and they are less hydrating. But uh, sport drinks, they are high in sugar. They are more hydrating and the main difference here we can see that they do not contain caffeine. Uh, have you ever heard about the facts and myths of energy drinks? Uh, here one of the myth is energy drink will help you to focus and give you extra energy. But the fact really is yes they give you some short term energy uh, but they are loaded with sugar and there is nothing nutritious about them. So we need to wake up and we need to focus. Here is another myth that energy drinks are better hydration than water. Without a doubt, we all know that water is healthier and it is more hydrating than energy drinks because energy drinks contains high amount of sugar and caffeine and they contain very less amount of water. So people here need to understand the benefits of drinking water to replenish their energy supplies rather than a sugary alternative which has been fully pumped of addictives. see the pros of energy drink. Firstly, uh, increase the alertness as it contains the herbal supplements such as guarana which is used to increase the energy and mental alertness then increase endurance. As energy drink uh, we all know that have high source of vitamin B uh, which is used to increase the energy and it will help you with the performance and endurance. Then zero calories. This is the healthier option as its purpose is to limit your weight gain and sugar consumption than convenience. As purchasing the energy drink is accessible at almost any retail store. Also they are affordable. Uh, then we will see the cons of energy drinks. First increase the sugar intake. Uh, we all know that it contains 25 grams to 39 grams of sugar. And large quantity of sugar consumption can lead to many problems uh, like risk of increased anxiety, then risk of heart issues if it is over consumed. This is the most important factor you should keep in the mind while consuming the energy drink. There are some important points we all should know. First. Uh, in young adults and teens, uh, they are particularly vulnerable to energy drink. So in acknowledgement of them, uh, UK has imposed a ban on selling the energy drinks to children under the age of 16. Because it shows that about 30% of teens use the products and same for adults also. Second, as we all know that energy drink improves the endurance and performance. So many athletes use the energy drinks primarily for its stimulatory effect or to enhance the focus, alertness and their reaction time. Lastly, uh, we all know that people consume energy drinks as their cool way to beat the summer heat and the beverage consumption is likely to increase during the hot weather. But there are many risks after drinking the products 
लाइक इट कंटेन्स कैफीन एंड कैफीन इज डिहाइड्रेटिंग सो दिस मे नॉट बी अ गुड चॉइस इन हॉट वेदर we have conducted a survey and we got 163 responses most people are between the age of group uh, 18 to 25 it shows that 48% of people consume energy drinks without any special occasions and 48% uh, people believe that energy drinks has effect on keeping them awake and also rest 41% people tell that it has effect on physical resistance it is quite surprising right Uh, apart from that 12% of people used to consume the energy drinks mixing with the alcohol and uh, rest 72% people agree that they use more energy drinks during summer seasons than usual मन एट रात Still now you didn't have any solid food. It's not good to have energy drink on empty stomach, bro. Yeah, I know, but I can't stop it. Let me buy one thing, bro. Hi bro, what happened? You are feeling so tense. Hello, nothing bro. Just family problems. In between, I have so many exams. That's why I am feeling too stressed. It's okay, bro. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. Bro, I want to tell you something. Okay, what is that? Bro, you know, nowadays you are consuming more energy drinks that contains caffeine, which makes you addict like other alcohol, other drugs. So stop drinking these energy drinks. Try to drink. Uh, Instead of this, try to drink fresh fruit juices or drink more water. Okay, bro. I will try to change myself. Sorry. Okay, bro. Hope you understand. Bye. Okay. In this picture, we can see that the caution of one of the energy drink is given. So, have you think that energy drinks are safe for everyone? or else uh, have you ever tried to read the caution statements or the ingredients of energy drinks given these caution statements vary by the brands and products always read the labels given carefully so now we are you know that most energy drink contains 100 to 300 mg of caffeine this amount can vary but up to 400 mg of caffeine per day is considered to be safe but people who are pregnant or breastfeeding they should limit their intake to 200 mg or less than that then in a healthy adults they should not have more than one energy drink per day and in children they shouldn't consume them at all the national federation state of high school associations recommend that a young athlete should not use energy drinks for hydration purpose and this information about the potential risk should be widely distributed to young athletes do you know why do people consume more energy drinks uh, there are several reasons for this uh, let's check out some of them as we have seen that energy drinks contain uh, more amount of caffeine and sugar which promotes alertness and energy levels by helping the people to stay awake and focused for the longer periods and also it improves the physical performance uh by reducing the restlessness feeling and also increasing the stamina etc as we can see that there is more amount of caffeine and sugar present in these energy drinks it this uh, this promotes the uh, the brain to release more amount of dopamine so now what is dopamine 
let me tell you dopamine is a neurotransmitter uh, that is associated with pleasure reward and motivation so by consuming the more amount of energy drinks the brain eventually increases the production of dopamine and also due to this there can be more consumption of energy drinks uh, but due to the excessive consumption of energy drinks uh, this can have a negative effects on dopamine levels and the overall brain function uh, and also this may lead to the consumption of alcohol uh, cocaine and also other drugs uh, and also it can result in the temporary feeling of euphoria over time the this can lead to a decrease in dopamine receptor sensitivity and also this can result in the decrease in pleasure and motivation and also potentially leads to the addiction of these drugs uh, do you know what happens when we mix the energy drink and alcohol uh, let's have a look on this Uh, do you guys think our energy drinks a gateway to drug abuse? Uh, there is no direct evidence for this, but there is some evidence to suggest that uh, these energy drinks consumption may be linked to an increased risk of the substance abuse due to the amount of caffeine present in it. Now let's have a look on what happens to our body after consumption of an energy drink.
so are there any side effects of drinking these energy drinks uh, there are uh, there are lot of side effects actually uh, let's see some of them uh, they include uh, insomnia changes in sleep pattern headaches vomitings dehydration and also they may lead to the poor academic performances uh, and also there may be some behavioral changes due to the excess consumption of these drinks and also uh, it may uh, lead to the caffeine poisoning if it is consumed too much is there any hidden truth regarding the energy drink industries uh, we can definitely say yes for this the first thing is lack of regulation energy drinks are not subject to the same regulations as the other foods and beverages this means that the manufacturers uh, usually are not required to disclose the exact amount of caffeine and other stimulants present in their products and also there is no limit on the amount of caffeine that can be included in these energy drinks and also these energy drink companies uh, often target the young people with their marketing strategies and campaigns promoting their products as a way to enhancing the performance by staying the awake and active particularly as many energy drinks uh, contain a high amount of sugar which they will not which they will never disclose in any of the advertisement these uh, high amount of sugar will show adverse effects on the health and also excessive consumption of these energy drinks has also linked to a negative range of health effects including the increased heart rate and blood pressure insomnia anxiety and also dehydration there have also been reports of serious adverse events such as heart attacks and even deaths associated with the energy drink consumption what do you think are the signs of energy drink dependence firstly the major sign is feeling a strong urge or desire to consume energy drinks even though continuing to drink energy drinks despite experiencing negative effects on health social life work or studies is a sign of dependence next is the prioritizing energy drinks over other activities that is by spending a significant amount of time and money obtaining and consume these energy drinks and sacrificing all other activities Uh, so what can we do to get out of it uh, get enough sleep which is crucial for maintaining the energy levels throughout the day so at least aim for 7 to 9 hours of sleep per night and also regular exercise can improve energy levels by increasing the blood flow and oxygen to these muscles and improving the mood and reducing the stress next is consuming a well balanced diet which includes the healthy fruits and vegetables which can help to restore the nutrients and boost the energy levels so there is no need to consume an energy drink and also it could be even helpful uh, when you seek the support from the friends and family members or a healthcare professionals as they can help you by providing a solution to it uh, uh, you may even get a doubt that even though when you follow all these lifestyle changes and following all the ways to get rid of it but still if you can but if you still feel like consuming an energy drink then what are the alternative drinks that we can consume uh, there are several alternative drinks to energy drinks that can provide a boost of energy without the negative health effects that these energy drink gives uh, let's see some of them firstly water dehydration can cause weakness so staying hydrated by drinking water throughout the day can help you maintain these energy levels so make drinking water as a first choice next is uh, drinking coconut water is it, it is also a good choice because it is a natural source of uh, electrolytes potassium and other minerals that help to keep the body hydrated and energized next is the ginger tea ginger is a mild stimulant and its spiciness uh, is similar to the hot peppers which will help the food to be converted into energy faster and it also provides the antioxidants and nutrients that can boost these energy levels next is the protein shake or smoothie uh, drinking a high quality protein shake or smoothie can help increase your protein levels and give you an energy boost and finally the wheat grass juice uh, it improves the blood flow digestion and detoxification and also its easy digestibility and rapid absorption power make it a, make it an exceptional natural ener- energy enhancer So guys what do you think the energy drink is is it good or is it bad uh, well my answer would be yes uh, if you consume it in a limited amount but uh, if your consumption is more than your limit then it will definitely going to affect your health so guys after explaining you all what and how an energy drink 
can show before and after effect on our body. Finally, I would like to conclude by saying that consuming energy drink can give you a quick energy boost, but they also come with the negative health effect which should also be considered. Therefore, it is important to consume energy drinks in a limited amount. So, think before you drink. Thank you. Well, that was quite a presentation, wasn't it? I hope you learned something and got to know about what you are consuming on a daily basis. Wait, was the presentation too long? Are you guys still with me? If you are still with me, please type yes in the chat box. Let me know that you are still with us. Okay, I can see the responses. Uh, now, Red Bull gives you wings. Uh, isn't it a top-notch statement for an advertisement? Uh, let me also know in the chat box that have you guys heard about Red Bull? Of course you have. I guess you all know about Red Bull, right? Yeah, I can see your responses right now. Uh, so yeah, as promised, let us start with the games without any further delay. Uh, the person who is screen sharing, please share the games. Uh, the first game will be back for you. Uh, uh, sound, uh, keep the volume a little low, please. Make it 50. Yeah, thanks. Uh, these are the rules. A sentence related to the topic will be shown on the screen. You will guess if the answer is a fact or a bluff and send answers in the chat box. The first one to comment the right answer will win. A total of eight questions will be there and 15 seconds will be given for each question. So yeah, let's start. energy the more you consume energy drink the more you gain energy so the answer is now i see uh, most of you got the right answer. Uh, and I guess the winner for this question is uh, Chaudhary Alo. Congratulations. Okay, the next question. Red Bull is a brand of energy drinks created by USA. Fact or bluff? And the answer is, what is the answer? It's a bluff. Most of you got it wrong. I'm sorry, guys. The third question there, energy drink can be consumed by any age groups. Fact or bluff? I can see people replying bluff. Okay, let's check. Let's check. You got it right. Next question there. Sugar and caffeine are the two key ingredients in energy drinks. Fact or bluff? Uh, 
I can see people replying fact. Let's check that. Yay! It's a fact and it's correct. Consume, the less likely you are to feel the effects of dopamine response. Fact or bluff? Okay, people are reply. Uh, it's uh, 50 50 right here. But this question is for you know who studies biology, so I'm not sure if you get the correct answer. Uh, let's check the answer, please. Yay! It's a fact and it's correct. <laughs> Energy drinks are not problematic when mixed with alcohol. Fact or bluff? Okay, everybody is right here. Everybody answered it correctly. It's a... Let's check the answer. Yeah, it's a bluff. Energy drinks can actually improve your learning power. Is it a fact or a bluff? Okay, I can see people replying bluff there. Do you guys not believe? Okay, let's check the answer, please. Replied fact. The only energy drink that won't kill you is water. Fact or bluff? I guess everybody knows this. Yes, I can see. This was the first game. I think everybody got the answers right. Uh, let's go to the second game, please. Okay, here we'll be playing GTA Vice City. Unfortunately, I don't have the cheat code, guys. Uh, of course not. We'll be playing. The second game is Find the Missing Letters. Uh, we'll start. Please start. The rules are uh, the name of an energy drink or substance of abuse will be given uh, with missing letters. The, it will only be the words which, which were given in the presentation, guys. You must find the missing letters and comment the correct name in the chat box. 15 seconds will be given for each item. Answers sent after 15 seconds will not be counted. And first one will be enough. Of course, let's start. Okay, so uh, I think everybody already got it. Let's check that, please. Okay, everybody answered it correctly. Congratulations. Uh, the next question, please. I think everybody knows this. Yeah, I can already see your answer. Correct answer is Gatorade. Congratulations. The next question, please. This one is really easy, guys. Uh, somebody replied red will. Uh, yeah, it's Bill. <laughs> I guess it's Bill. Uh, a 
lot of people already replied nicely. Yeah, it's Cobra, I guess. Let's check the answer. Uh, do, what do you think this is? Uh, let me check the chat box, please. Yeah, let's check the answer. We already have replies. Yeah. You guys are correct. The correct answer is, yeah, you got it right. What do you think this is? This is a substance of abuse? Yeah, I can see already the answers. Let's check. This is also a substance of views. Yeah, yeah, I can already see the answers. Yeah, please check. This is the last one. Okay. Uh, I can already see 200 plus answers in the chat box. Thank you for your participation, everyone. Uh, uh, now is the time for your questions. Please type in your queries in the chat box. Uh, feel free to ask anything related to the topic. And also, I would like to welcome our panel for today, consisting of Dyson Elizabeth Charger, Doke Snehal, Divishri, and Ronald. These people will help you answer their questions. Please feel free to type your questions in the chat box. We are waiting. Okay, there we have our first question. Uh, what according to you is the role of parents or caregivers in preventing energy drink addiction in children and teenagers? Uh, I guess Snehal will be answering this question. Can you Snehal? Yeah, surely. So, okay, let me think about it. It takes some time to process, right? So according to me, uh, for putting an insight over this question, I feel is uh, as uh, energy drink consumption is a type of substance abuse, right? So maybe parents can have a stronger role in monitoring how much they award or is consuming the energy drink on a daily basis and try to reduce them by giving them strict compliance that only a certain amount is to be consumed and also giving them better alternatives such as healthy drinks, which can also help them to gain energy so that the energy part also won't be compromised and and the parents would also be giving a better alternative for their what's future. And also uh, parents should help them to understand the harmful effects and also promote some good activities such as exercise and adequate sleep. So yeah, so parents can play a major role in prohibiting the in intake of their children's uh, energy drink usage. Okay, Snehal, thank you for your uh, informative answer. Now I would like to take the second question. As we noticed in your presentation that energy drinks contain harmful <coughs> amounts of caffeine, can you tell us the actual range of caffeine intake for an individual? I guess, uh, Shajal, you can take this question. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. so uh, we just learned that uh, all energy drinks uh, contains uh, caffeine so caffeine is one of the major ingredients of uh, energy drinks so it's important to know the uh, permissible levels of caffeine intake so that we can track uh, our caffeine intake and we can stay away from toxic levels right 
So according to US uh, Food and Drug Administration, children are allowed to consume up to only 50 milligram of caffeine per day. For uh, young adults and teens, the value is less than 100 milligram. And in the case of healthy adults, they can consume up to uh, 400 milligrams of caffeine per day. I hope I answered your question. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was perfect. Uh, now, uh, we have the third question here. Are there any legal restrictions on the sale or marketing of energy drinks? I think, Divya, you should take this question. Yeah, surely I'll answer this question. Uh, yes, there are some rules and regulations regarding uh, uh, selling and marketing these uh, energy drinks to protect the people from uh, high usage of caffeine and uh, health risk. Uh, the rules mainly include uh, uh, to the, the rules actually include the warning of labels and the limit usage of caffeine in the energy drink. Um, actually, different countries have different uh, 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 rules so it's important to check what is applied in your area i hope i answered the question thank you uh yeah perfectly and uh we'll take the last question now because we have a time limit so the last question i'll take is can drinking too much energy drink make you an insomniac i think Rinal, you can answer this uh we can't hear you Rinal. No, there's no audio. No, we can't hear you now. Um, okay, I guess you can type it in the chat box to let the person know the answer. Thank you. Thank Thank you everyone for answering, uh, for uh, thank you the panel members to answer the questions and also to the people who asked. Uh, now I would like to call upon our mentor, Dr. Elfred Navarro, without whom this would not have been possible. Doc, can you please? Hello. Yes, good afternoon. Hello, I am currently in a mobile situation, but I would like to thank everyone who joined our webinar and we do hope that you were enlightened by the what we have learned and what we have discussed and our future doctors it is also imperative for us to always educate and without any bias we also need to present these facts with evidences uh, so as doctors we need to be responsible for what we actually also do, uh, post or share or whatever, because we need to do our own due diligence in knowing the facts. So uh, thank you everyone and congratulations to the organizers. Please do not forget to take our photos. We can request all of our participants to open their video now, their cameras, so we can take a photo. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to ask everyone to open their cameras, please. It is just for documentation purposes. Uh, one, two, three. I hope everybody is smiling. Smile, please. Thank you. That's it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to give a special thanks to my batchmates for the cooperation which they provided. And this would not have been successful without you all. And uh, thank you to our doctors, mentors, and Dr. Andres. Thank you all. And thank you to the participants who chose to watch this webinar. Uh, also, uh, Sagarika will be posting a feedback form and uh, the people who join can at least give a feedback to us about our webinar. Uh, if you liked it or not, let us know. Uh, please post the link in the chat box for the feedback, feedback form. Yeah, there's uh, the feedback form in the chat box. Please fill it up for us. Uh, let us know if you liked it or not. Um, and I hope you learned something. Thank you to everyone who joined. Uh, uh, the uh, My block members, please remain. Everybody else can uh, leave the meeting now. The webinar is over. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay, we're going to have our debriefing in a while. Uh, okay, Doc. Uh, doctor, do we join again or we'll continue in this meeting? Uh, yeah, we can. How many more left? Um, uh, yeah, we can just stay. We can just stay here in this room, link. So I don't need to create another room. But yeah. Okay. Okay. We're just going to have a very quick debriefing. The host, maybe you can remove some of those or should not be included here. Uh, Sagarika, I think I'll uh, just check once if somebody yeah. is not from our group. Just, yeah. And Doctor, do we need to document our blog separately? Like photos? Uh, doctor? How many more? Uh, doctor, do you need the attendance for today? No need, no need for the attendance. No okay. No. Okay. okay. Okay, I think we can start our word debriefing now. And uh, first off, I would like to uh, ask Dr. Andres if you want to say something, ma'am. Dr. Andres. Okay. Okay. I'll, let's have let's have our this observation. So, you tell me, guys, how do you feel that your webinar is now over? You're smiling, Shreya. Yes, Doctor. Uh, Adas, you are smiling. Yeah. You feel so relieved, right? Yes. Yes. 
was it really a very uh, difficult task or was it really a challenging no. activity for all of you? I would not say how it was challenging, it? but we, yeah, we learned how to conduct these uh, webinars. I've been watching a quite few in the COVID, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, is this your first time to be hosting an, an activity or doing such activity like this? Uh, no, no, no. I have hosted a, quite a few programs in India, so it's all right for me. Okay. So we could see that you are quite confident and you know really what you're doing as a, as a host, right? Yes, Doc. Yeah. So how about your group mates? How do you feel? Were you able to invite your um, family members, friends in this webinar? Uh, what about you guys? My parents were watching the live on YouTube. Your other classmate? Yeah, anybody else whose parents My dad watching? was watching from the Zoom. <laughs> yeah, you're all smiling. Samishka. Samishka? Yes, doctor. So how was it? You were one of the presenters, right? Yes, doctor. Yeah, so how do you feel now? Actually, it's quite relieving after being stressed for so long. I was actually scared. So like, I feel like light now. So, you know, you know, uh, this activity doesn't just involving uh, raising awareness, community initiative. It's basically a learning process for everyone. Because as a doctor, we need to be an effective communicator doesn't necessarily mean that you know all the diseases, you know all the management, you know all the drugs. But the problem here is, can you able to convey your message effectively to your patients? And if you're going to have a message like this, how can you convey that in a group of people like this community? So you see, always try to be more emphatic and also try to be in the shoes of your audience. First thing off is I ask you who are your target audience and how are you going to convey this message? It's a very important. Who is my target audience? And what would be the effective language that I can use or media that I can use or need you know that I can use for them to easily understood what I'm saying. So this is actually takes a lot of skills and experience to become also an effective communicator. Okay, apart, other than that, I would like to comment that it actually a, a good improvement from the previous slides that you sent me, from the previous drafts that you sent me. I really feel good about, you know, watching, listening to you guys because you made the topic really relatable and you made the topic, you just really made the topic also uh, easily to understand. However, what can I also comment is that perhaps as medical practitioner, we could probably emphasize more on the complications, you know, of these energy drinks, on on maybe future problems that they might be encounter as well. But if you're going to explain on that level, we need also to give them some evidences, some facts. No, it could probably be uh, useful if you could maybe one or two study or one or two research conducted in certain parts of the world that are clinically, you know, these are clinical and these are evidences. No, So he, here, here are not just hearsays or what, but we need to be sounding more like a professional or like a authority in this field, right? It's not just a common uh, informative or educational campaign, but also try to be more uh, clinically relevant as well. But the topic itself, energy drink, it's not just as common as hypertension, diabetes. But what I also would like with your group is that you took the challenge of choosing this topic and looking for materials or resources that we could use to convey your message in this webinar. 
Okay. Do you do you have any other experiences or would like to share to the to the group? What are the key learnings? What you have learned from this activity? I know it took you a while, two to three weeks, extended, extended, and extended. So how was it? The main key learning talk is that whatsoever we have conveyed, we should take it up to your ourselves. Like many people in this group daily have two, one or two stings or cobra on a daily basis, right? Because this is how we get energy for ourselves too. So whatsoever we have conveyed to the public, we should take that thing into our own consideration and you should work over it. If someone is consuming two bottles of sting or gatorade, they should reduce it to one. If someone is having it one, they should do it once, once three days or twice a week. So we should impl implicate all that things on ourselves first. That's correct. This is where team works actually is very essential in group activity like this. And also, since we are doing it live, even if there are some pre-recorded videos, there are things that can happen. So all of you should be involved in running the show, not just the host or the technical team. All of you should be involved and all of you should have a backup, should have, you, you know how to do troubleshooting if there are going to be delays, if they're going to be like, you know, some setbacks. So you need to quick and think fast. If anything happens, like uh, we are very sorry for the delay because of, of uh, logistic or poor signal from my side and also from the side of Dr. Andres. We're very sorry about it. Still, you were able to manage the time. No, even the, the 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 game show was quite a bit long as expected. No, but you're able to manage the time very well because I also mentioned that we need we just have to skip the national anthem. So, okay, that's good. Dr. Andres, ma'am. Okay, again, apologies. Sorry, I was at the highway because I had a call. Anyway. See, as we have told you, you don't need to have a high highfalutin topic with all the technical explanations for you to have an effective public health lecture. And you chose a simple, very relatable, and something that people would be interested in because it's common, especially in your age group. Okay, In particular, you as clerks, you have mentioned that some of you are drinking because you're not used to going on duty, some of you. So some of you will resort to that energy drink to sustain duty. And that's true because when we were clerks and interns ourselves, we were, some of us were also doing that, okay? Um, some were off the market because they, had, they really had bad effects, had cardiac effects causing at worst death of some, some people uh, using these energy drinks. And creating awareness for such is a, a, a simple thing, public thing that you could do. And see, no technical, no, no lecture type. Diba, Doc Elry, no lecture type, diabetes, what is like that, like that, hypertension, what is like that, like that. Those are things you have already learned in, in your first three years of medical school. And do you think that your audience, if you are going to educate them, would be interested in the pathophysiology of such? No, but you were actually telling practical things why you should not to energy drinks. Okay, and it's quite common. Studying, physical activity, sports, leisure. Some would drink that prior to sex, etc. Okay, and there are a lot of repercussions, and I think you've explained that adequately. Okay, um, does this, well, we've had two successive groups that uh, performed quite good. So it's very encouraging. I hope this trend continues. 
So again, congratulations. I hope you have learned life skills that you will use beyond your clerkship and internship. You will use this in residency when you are consultants yourselves. All right? Good job. Uh, thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc, for making this possible, actually. We would not have done this if it was not for you. So welcome to public health. So this is actually public health. We can, we can always be try to be resourceful. It doesn't mean that even if you are not really into the community setting and everything, you cannot do much. We can still do much with, with the public and with, with this community. So despite of all the you know, setbacks, uh, as much as we really want to, we can always find ways. Okay, so we also encourage you in your own field, in your own localities, that if there's opportunity for you to educate our people, you are in the right position. No, you are in the right position. Always, always assume that you have something to share with your community. Even if you are a medical student or clerk, even if you are not yet full-fledged doctor, we we'll always have something to share to our people because we are already equipped with knowledge and experience as well. So try to be more, uh, you know, uh, socially relevant, especially the world needs us. Okay? So thank you very much again and congratulations to this batch. We look forward to seeing you in, in hospital perhaps or in some convention. And this time you will be the one giving the talk. So we will be very proud, Dr. Andres, to be very proud, of course, to see in you from the, po uh, the podium giving the talk, okay? So thank you and have a good day, everyone. Take care. Thank you, Doc. 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 Thank you,